Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do a very special pie, cheese and onion with a bit of potato, but here's a special bit in gluten-free pastry, oh yes. This was almost requested by Tony Brennan, actually he wanted gluten-free bread, and, I, and I'll try and get around to that quite soon because I'm actually quite interested in the, the idea of uh, gluten-free baking, because it's really not easy. I mean, gluten is, it's all the clues in the name, it's the glue that holds the dough together. And without that, you're, um, well, scratching around for alternatives. Anyway, we have one, so we'll do it. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And let's go on with it. Cheese and onion pie with a bit of potato in gluten-free pastry. Oh yeah. First thing to do is make the pastry. So I've got 200 grams of gluten-free white flour, 100 grams of fat, a teaspoon of xanthan gum, and one egg, and 15 ml of milk, and a pinch of salt. So the flour, this is actually a mix of different flours. When I think of flour, I always think of wheat flour, but actually pretty much any grain or nut or various other things can be ground up and called flour because uh, you know flour is just well it just means fine powder really so this is a blend of rice flour potato flour tapioca maize and buckwheat which well they say it works i know it works because i did an experiment a couple of days ago the fat i've got 40 grams of butter 60 grams of lard you can use any combination of fats you could you you could swap out the lard for uh, shortening like crisco or even margarine or use all butter and the <laughs> elephant in the room is the xanthan gum don't be afraid it is a chemical this is a chemical that's a chemical everything here is a chemical so don't be afraid of chemicals you'll have eaten tons of xanthan gum in your life it's present in pretty much a lot of things <laughs> as a binder because it's really good at that and um, so this replaces the gluten in the flour and that is the binder the egg also helps a bit but mostly it's this okay all right I'm gonna grate the fat because it'll blend in easier Right, I've transferred the flour to a bigger bowl so that I can actually mix everything together. Now, a uh, teaspoon of xanthan gum. It's just a you know, whitish powder and you can get it online. I'll put a link down below. You probably won't get it in your local supermarket. <laughs> but it's not, you know, it's not massively expensive. That was £3.99 for uh, 100 grams. Uh, a pinch of salt. A quick mix. I'm not using the mixer for this, although you know you can do, but as always, we're rubbing in and trying to get a consistency of like coarse breadcrumbs. Okay, so there's my crumbs, and now I'm going to mix together the egg and the milk. And then we'll add about three quarters of it to the crumb mix. Don't put it all in at once because you might not need all of that liquid. You just want to add enough to make it come together in a bowl. That's really not doing it. <laughs> no, it's not plain today. So that's, that is all of it. I might even need a bit more milk. I'll just tip it out and see if I can press it together. Okay, I guess that'll do. Right, I'm going to wrap this in plastic film. And stick it in the fridge to rest for at least half an hour. Now I'm making the filling, so I need some potato. I'm just going to weigh these. Whoa, 300 grams. <laughs> a bit less when I peeled them. And they're a bit old and scabby, but that's okay. We just cut the old scabby bits off and that'll be fine. 
and peel it. A lot of people will say, don't peel your potatoes though. All the goodness is in the skin. <laughs> it might well be, but I just don't like it in, in pies and things. I do like it in a jacket potato, obviously, but this isn't that. Now we need to slice them about five mil, about a quarter of an inch slices. Magic knife. Now I've got a pan with some water in it, I'm going to sprinkle in some salt and then add the sliced potato and that goes on the stove, bring it to the boil, turn it down and simmer it for about 10-15 minutes until all the potatoes are tender. While the potatoes are cooking we'll top and tail Cut in half and peel the onion and then slice it a bit thinner than you slice the potatoes. Magic knife's not working on onions today. Okay, so um, I don't think long strands of onion would be really nice in the pie, so I'm going to cut them into thirds. Right, now the tatties are done, so I'm going to drain them using our shiny new wonderful colander that Mrs. Keith Cooks came home with the other day to replace the one that we've had for about 20 years and whose handle fell off after we'd had it about a week. All right, so just drain the tatties. Stand here for about an hour till they're properly dry. Now put the water back in there, I'm going to put the onions in and we'll just let those simmer for about five minutes until they're soft. I'm going to drain the onions using this old sieve. And they can hang around and, well, we need them to cool down to like room temperature. I'm going to make up the pie cases. I'm using these small quiche dishes. They do make a very nice sized pie. So I'll uh, butter the inside of these because they're not making any pretense at being non-stick. flour in your worktop and I'm using actually rice flour not uh, not wheat flour because obviously <laughs> avoiding the gluten and um, here's my well rested dough there we go nice flat piece of pastry and just pop it in one of our tins carefully press it down right to the bottom try not to tear it Crease it, fold it, or otherwise damage it. Now because these tins don't have a rim, turn it upside down and just cut the excess but leave a small margin to form a rim for you to stick the top onto. I'm thinking I should have maybe added a little bit more moisture because it is quite dry and prone to cracking. Anyway, we'll get over it. We always do. We also need to make some lids, so roll out a bit of pastry and get one of your dishes and just stamp out the lid. Right, there's my four pastry cases and my four lids. And I was sweating there a bit at the end. I thought I might not have enough pastry, but I managed it and I've got a wee blob left over that I have really no plans for. Okay, time to put the filling in. The choice of cheese is up to you, whatever you can get, whatever you like. I've got extra mature cheddar. I've got some Grana Padano, which is similar to Parmesan. I've got a Camembert. Fancy packaging. 
Um, and this is purely because I love it and it's a proper melty, stretchy cheese. So, um, oh, a bit whiffy as well, that's good. Right, so to build the pie, I'm just improvising, by the way. But I think a layer of cheese at the bottom. A slice of tatey or two. I know the uh, pot potato doesn't get a credit in the title of this dish, but I do feel that you need it for, um, you know, for bulk. Oh, onions. More potato. A bit more onion. And then top it with some camembert. And also a little shaving of uh, Grana Padano. Or Parmesan. And we'll see if we can get a lid on that. So, <laughs> you want, want to moisten the rim with some water. And also moisten the edge of a lid. And press that on. And squeeze them together. And if you like, you can just do some indentations with a fork. And I used to believe that you had to put holes in the top to let the steam out while it was cooking. I haven't done that for probably about a year. I don't know. But I'm going to in this case because I do think we could get leakage if, if we don't have a way for the steam to get out. Is the pie's looking pretty good, just need a bit of finishing. Now you want your oven on 160 degrees Celsius for a fan oven, a convection oven. That's 180 for a conventional one, and that is gas four. Right, egg wash. One egg beaten with a splash of milk. Just paint that on the top of your pies. Make them nice and shiny. Okay, and just to finish it off, a little sprinkling of grated grana padano or parmigiano or cheddar or just to make it look more cheesy. Okay, so these go in the oven for 35 minutes and I'll turn them around halfway through to get even browning. Here we go. Alright, the time is up. Woohoo! Oh wow! Did I say don't put too much filling in? Or they'll explode like this. But actually, I don't mind that. They, they kind of look like haystacks. Hmm. I'll let them cool down a little bit and then get them out of the tins. Right, let's do it. I should say, my test run the other day had a different filling. It was uh, corned beef and onion. So we didn't have cheese running over everything and sticking stuff together. Yay. Come on. Yay. Right. There we go. One pie. And now it's taster time with Mrs. Keith Cooks. <laughs> You'll look very well. <laughs> Thank you. It's a bit poorly. <laughs> but you're being dead brave. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming down to eat. <laughs> to get a cheese and onion pie. Oh, that looks good. Uh, yeah. We actually. are talking about one of my favourite combos, so. Um, <laughs> one thing. Mm. I'm being posh because I know he's got this warm. Hold on. <clears throat> Oh, looks good. Tastes good. And probably does you good. <laughs> mm. So, mm. yeah, the pastry, I think it's uh, it's fine. It's, it, it, it is a bit different from, you know, the, the, the gluten-y pastry that we're used to, but. Mm. It's very light mm. and the the cheese on the top is just delicious. It really is. Oh, this is lovely. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, this is a, actually all about the pastry, not the filling. Even mm. though the filling is magnificent. Um, oh, it is. It's, it's, it's really pretty as well. Look at the shades of colour going through it. It's all so, it's all so subtle. The creams 
What? The other... What's the, what cheese have you chosen? Because uh, got... this is yummy. We've got cheddar mm-hmm. and camembert and um, <clears throat> uh, parmesan, granite padano. So what, well, this works? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gluten-free pastry, now you know. I will say though that um, Keith had a go at these yesterday as well. Was it the day before? I don't know. Um, and I found that it was, I didn't like something that was on the surface, on the base. What was it? Yeah, it was rice flour. You know, normally I would, I would roll it and I would use wheat flour on the worktop to stop the dough from sticking. So I used rice flour and it's it's a bit grittier. Mm. So, I mean, flour. when I had that, I, I really didn't like it, but I'm saying now that this is, I don't know, maybe it's because it's been cooked up again, again since you warmed it in the microwave, didn't you? Yeah. Just now. And that works. Mm-hmm. There you go. Gluten-free pastry. Don't be scared. So, <laughs> I was. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. Enjoy. Mm-hmm.